I guess. <laughs> Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albine Rhino Beer Review. The honey monster and the rhino are here with this here, the Saint Andre, which is lagered in the Bohemian style. Uh, Saint Andre is from Toronto. It's the Saint Andre Brewing Company in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It's Saint Andre at Simpatico.ca. I think that's their email address. That would yeah, sorry, their email. Yeah, yeah, well, fuck off. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's well, they don't really have a website. If you want to find them on the internet. You're going to have to go to the Cool Beer Brewing Company because uh, this is part of their home delivery. They'll they'll deliver this to your house. Really? With the Michael Duggan stuff. Ah! And um, their stuff. That, now, now, is it personally delivered by Mike Duggan? Because I think I want to order a case of a certain something be for the Honey phone Monster. Calls. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, the whole world knew that it was impossible, except for the fool who went ahead and did it anyway. In the early 1800s, Vienna was the commercial and cultural center of Bohemia. Art and ideas flowed freely in the boulevards, cafes. In the midst of this, a young Anton Dreher returned from brewing school to the family brewery. He created a recipe using the newly discovered lager yeast and the finest malt money could buy. His Vienna lager was a great success and flourished until Archduke Ferdinand's untimely demise. Some years later, I founded St. Andre. Some years. This was in the 1800s. Some years later, I founded St. Andre and set out to bring European beer culture a bit closer to home. My beer combines a blend of five specialty malts imported from Bavaria, Czech hops, and lager yeast, making it unique, smooth, and drinkable. Enjoy. Doug Pergley, Master Brewer. Pengley? Pergley? I'm blind. I can't uh, tell if that's an N or an R. Pengeli. There you go. Anyway, so I brought the whole case out. Doug Pengeli. Because I put these in the fridge when Boychuk brought them over, and I just thought, you know, we should show this stuff. Um, one second. So, here is what the bottle looks like. So this is the one we're going to drink. I'm going to put it here. Now, I'm going to show you these as I pull them out and then the camera. Okay. So, th these came straight from the box, okay? <laughs> straight from the box. <laughs> Are we talking like, oh, <laughs> catastrophic fail on every single label. I am, yeah, wow. Okay, this one's good, this one's good. Hey, that's not bad, yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We're batting 500 wow, here. Wow, there's, there's another one that goes in the fail pile. So we've got three fails. And uh, no, that one seems okay, a little bubbly, but. There we go. So, uh, was it a fail? Uh, we got three massive fails on label fail. Oh, God. Like, oh, yeah, massive God, label fail. This is the better brewing company? No, not at all. No, no, no. It's the cool beer. Is this? I don't sort know. of, not really. Sort of, not really. So, yeah, all right. So, I guess I guess I'm going to point it out right now. That's that's pretty shoddy. That's, um, like, now, to have 3 to 50% of the beers in the case have shit labels? We were talking in the U.S. Yeah, to, a man, to a man who runs the Flying Bison Brewing Company, Tim Herzog, and he was talking about the fact, you know, you're never really asked if you can brew beer, and you're never really checked all that much, and there's companies that make the craft brewing industry look bad. Um, right now, <laughs> right now, we might have found one. I don't because know. Because, I, I really, these are what you should give to your staff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm also unimpressed with? Look at the caps. All the caps are like scratched to shit. Well, they, they probably reuse them. But still, even if you like reuse the caps, you'd think you'd like dust them up a little bit, you know? Like gussy it up a little bit. I, I well, probably not after you've done this label job. What's the point, right? But, you know, I don't know. This is, yeah, this is just short of shoddy presentation. Okay. Six beers, you get three bad labels, and a couple of labels that have like clear white marks on it, stuff like that. I don't know. That seems kind of cheap on the label. Like, why? Why would you skip out on that? I guess you know it's probably the cheapest. Of the but, you process. know, this one is bad enough, but these just make me laugh. Like these ones here, just make just me laugh. Just missing all together. Anyway, they're, they're French style. They're naked from the bottom down. So again, Vienna style lagered, 4.8 percent alcohol, 341 milliliters. Let's get it on. You guys haven't even drank the beer yet? No, we're just, we've just been going on about the label. Well, it's a really shitty label, you know? No, the labeling process overall is really crappy. Wait, did you say it's 4.8 or 4.6? It's on the fucking bottle. Because this says 4.6. 
Oh, wait, Tim's illiterate. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's me who detects the error, but I'm illiterate. <sighs> yeah, no, that's clearly 4.6, <laughs> dude. It's very clearly 4.6. <laughs> Blindness strikes again. Okay, 4.6% alcohol. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Alicia's just being really mean to me. I'm not. She's okay. being so mean to me. She told us she wasn't gonna give me any for pilot, and I was like, "Come on, I've got like six bucks." Anyways, <laughs> it, it doesn't look bad. <laughs> I mean, does it smell good? It doesn't smell terrible, but it doesn't smell good. It smells like something though, in comparison to what we usually drink. Uh, mm, kind of has a soap sudy smell, but that's the head. Malt. Mm, the Czech hops are there. It, gets, it gives you that like Pilsner hop smell. Mm. So you get a little bit of that earthy cut grass smell. Right, yeah. yeah. Let's try it. Yep. Doesn't smell bad, doesn't look bad. Doesn't taste bad. That aftertaste leaves a little bit to be desired. That's really strange. It comes in. It, it comes in, and then yeah. you get this middle taste, which is not bad, and then the aftertaste is just, ow. The aftertaste is not good. Light-bodied, easy drinking. Yeah. Soft. Malty up front. Mm. The Czech hops do come through. Then you get, like, this bready kind of cotton mouthy taste. That's the finish. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, that's not good at all. A little bit I do not enjoy that. Truthfully, though, it's not its not the worst thing I've ever drank. And, I mean, <laughs> if this was the bottle I was handed, I i would actually be getting something better than I would have thought with a bottle like this. Yeah. And this one, I could say, was 4.8%. That's true. <laughs> it doesn't say. It is French style. Make it from the waist down. Actually, that really surprised me that he could sell it like this when the alcohol percentage is ripped off of it. Yeah. But anyway. Well, maybe, you know, it depends. Maybe they were drunk when they were boxing it or something. I don't know. If you work at a brewery, I don't know. Maybe getting drunk and boxing things is something it's not, that It's not bad. Yeah, um, you know what? It is not... It, it, it isn't bad, but that aftertaste leaves a lot to be desired. And I don't know if I could drink that for a long time. No, I was going to say, if it wasn't for that aftertaste, this would be an easily sessionable beer. Yeah. Um, truthfully, it's probably a nice chugging beer. Uh, because it is so soft that you could probably just chug the bottle back and not really taste much. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Again, but that that oh, that aftertaste is just it really dries it, and that's unfortunate because this is yeah, this I think is a fine beer except for that aftertaste, and I'm. Uh, all, all joking about the labels aside, it's, it's not it's not bad. Yeah, it, it doesn't look very professional when you pull out those labels in a case, but the beer itself, the beer itself makes up. Yeah, like, is it great? You know, the la 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 labels like pulling right off. You know, it's like not even not even really stuck on. Very is it a great beer? No. Is it is it a worthwhile beer? Sure. I I don't remember how much this beer it costs. I bought it once a long time ago as well. Eleven ninety five. It was eleven ninety five. Okay, so you're so, looking two bucks a beer. Your standard. So it's the cheapest one that yeah. you can really get out there. Because I mean, twelve twelve seventy five to thirteen five oh five is the price right now for most beers. And I would pack. I would drink this before Laker. So, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, this is much so better. Than I, Laker. I gave Laker about a, a four point eight because it was four point eight percent alcohol. <laughs> Fact. Um. This is. <laughs> This, this is, is actually 4.6, but a little bit better. This is this is better. Uh, I'm not gonna take points away for its labeling. I might make fun of it for its labeling. <laughs> I make might make fun of it for who it's attached to. Are they small brew? Are they small brewery? Yeah. Okay. So okay, this is kind of like a, just a small brewery kind of shoddy thing. Oh, well, that's that's doable. This isn't like you know opening a uh, opening a case of Labatt Blue or something and having all the labels fly off. Uh, I'm gonna give it a uh, five seven five. It's actually worth a drink. I would buy it again. I wouldn't go out looking for it. No. If I was handed it. Yeah. If I was handed it. If, and I, if I only had $12 and I had to buy a six pack and it was Laker, Lake Port, or this, it would be this. Yeah. You know what? I would go with that too, for sure. In like a budget beer category, this is one of the better beers I've had in the budget beer category. And it's not like, it's not terrible. But the aftertaste is pretty, 
pretty goddamn gross. Like, just now, even tasting it over and over again, like, that aftertaste is something... You're gonna have to wash that out with either shots or cigarettes. Because that's just not... That's This is a smoker's beer. Because it's got a really awful aftertaste. And you gotta really... go. You gotta do something with that. But other than that, I would say... I, I'm gonna go five. I would go five. It's an average beer. It's a little bit better than our normals. So I'd probably say... Yeah, yeah. 5.75, actually. It's a little bit better. It's not, it's not crap, and it's not Laker, which I had to drink so much of, and I still regret to this day. Um, but other than that, no. Yeah, I would say 5 points. I'm going to go check. 5.75. I think you're the expert. I think you're going to make a good call on this one. 5.75. Thank you for watching, YouTube. This has been the Rhino and the Honey Monster drinking St. Andre. Bye-bye.